Welcome. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Thursday, October 13th, 2022. I am Select Board Chair Lenny Diggins, and I will now confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diana Hahn? Yes. John Hurd? Yes. Steve DeCourcy? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Sandy Cooler? Yes. Doug Hine? Yes. Ashley Meyer? Yes. Great. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, signed into law on July 17, 2022, which further extends certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation until March 31st, 2023. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom. It is being recorded and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. So let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. And we next turn to the second item on the agenda. That's the introduction. I'll just wait a little bit for the siren to go by. That's the introduction of Anna Linton, our library director. And I'll turn it now over to our town manager, Mr. Puller. Uh Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Anna Litton, who is our new library director. Uh, she comes to that position at, from being the assistant library director. Uh, and um, I know from having worked with her before in that position that she brings a lot of energy and excitement uh, here to Arlington. And um, instead of my talking about her, I would uh, like to introduce her and have her introduce herself. Please. Is this the right height? Is this good? Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening to everyone. I want to thank Sandy and the members of the select board for inviting me to speak to you tonight. Sandy asked me here tonight to introduce myself, and when I'm introducing myself, I often tell people I became a librarian for all the wrong reasons, because I love books. <laughs> but I've stayed in the field for over 25 years for all the right reasons which is that, I, is that I am truly dedicated to the mission of public libraries, to serve communities with engaging collections, useful and usable spaces, and community enriching services. Over my career, I've served many roles, reference librarian, a teaching librarian, a teen services librarian, a technology instructor, a community relations coordinator. I came to Arlington in 2017 as the Fox Branch Librarian. The joy of working in branch libraries is providing direct service, ordering books that you watch patrons pick up every single day, offering programs where families bring their young kids to engage with the library, creating comfortable neighborhood spots for every single resident to come in, find a seat, do their work, find a book, find something that's truly engaging. Engaging directly with the community every day is the joy of working in libraries. In 2018, when our former assistant director left, I knew that I could support the community, the staff, and the director. There was so much to love in my previous role as assistant director, namely creating the Arlington Reads Together program every year, pulling in new partners to that program, including Arlington Public Schools, the Dallin Museum, and others. Building connections across town with town boards and commissions, with community interested people and finding ways to make our work connect with the work of the community. And of course, working directly with the Friends of the Robbins Library, such a fantastic support group. When the former library director, Andrea Nicolay, decided to move on to be closer to family, I saw new opportunities to support the community, to learn and to grow. I'm so grateful to the hiring committee and to Sandy for giving me the opportunity to continue to serve the community of Arlington in this new role. The pandemic period has brought a lot of clarity, both for libraries and for me personally. In libraries, in our library, we have seen increased use since the pandemic period. 
In FY22, we saw our highest circulation in many, many years, as far back as I could easily find data. We circulated over 936,000 physical and electronic items. We're now the fourth largest lender in the Minuteman Library Network, behind much li larger communities like Cambridge, Newton, and Brookline. For me personally, I saw how my job matters every single day in a new way. We saw how much communities missed us when we were closed, when our buildings were closed. We saw how vital our services are to our community. And we saw how much people want to engage with their libraries. And it really brought a new um, joy to my work and a real meaning to my work. I wanted to share with you the mission of the Robbins Library. The library is a vital community resource. We create opportunities for lifelong learning, meaningful connection, and discovery for all. We offer outstanding collections and services to meet the evolving needs and interests of the Arlington community. I'm looking to forward to so much, honoring the public's trust with careful and appropriate budgeting, making sure that our programs and collections continue to meet community needs as they change, bringing new users into the library and making sure that every single resident of Arlington feels welcome and that there's something useful for them in the library and improving our spaces, making sure that we are accessible for all, that we are useful and usable, and that we offer warm and inviting spaces. I'm truly excited for the future, and I can't wait to share what comes next with you and everyone in the community. Well, thank you very much, and I will now turn to my colleagues to see if they have any comments. And you know, I'm going to start up in the virtual realm. Just so, I tell, I tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll start. Ms. Mahan? Ms. Mahan? Sorry, you're doing the phone and the laptop. Uh, first, I'd like to, to make a motion to approve um, Ms. Litton as our new library director. Um, I feel silly saying welcome because you've certainly outlined everything that you've been doing here in town and as many know, one of my first best jobs was as a library page at the Robbins Library. And I agree with you, when you go into library services, sometimes the worst thing is that you love books. And I served under a director called Jim Fish, who came in and threw out a lot of the books. I almost got fired because I was going and saving books, <laughs> checking them out so they could stay in. Um, so I, I uh, want to thank the town manager for the process. I uh, had conversations with them to see how it was going along and doing our best to fill Ms. Nicolay's shoes. But I know that um, Ms. Wood and Anna, you're gonna, you've already stepped right in there and will bring us out of COVID and uh, moving forward here in Arlington. So uh, thank you so much for uh, accepting this great responsibility and I know you do well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahat and uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second the motion to approve of Ms. Litton as our library director. Um, and just welcome. I know you've been working in town for a while and you're doing an excellent job. That's why we, the town manager hired you and put you in that position and put the trust in this really important position. You know, I grew up using the libraries in Arlington and particularly the Fox Library, but also the Robbins Library as I got up a little older. And it's even to this day where a lot of the kids transition to a virtual lifestyle so many still rely on the library and it's important to have that there as a resource to make sure that kids don't forget about the way we used to get our information um, and it's a place for kids to go and study and it's just re a really important place for people to come and congregate and Arlington boasts really excellent libraries lucky to have two libraries and they both are very well want well run and will continue to be. And again, I look forward to working with you and welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks Mr. Hurd, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, I have very little to add to those excellent comments, uh, except that I love your vision of what a library is in the community. I think it's a very contemporary and fresh vision and your background, your interests really um, communicate that really well. So we're pleased to have you, thank you. Thank you Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Litton, I also want to echo the comments of, of my colleagues. Welcome you as the uh, library director. And just hearing the comments from Mrs. Mahan and Mr. Hurd that the library has been is in, 
very important resource in the town, as we all know, and they talked about their experiences. My experience was up at the Heights when the Dowan branch used to be there. My sister was a page in, in the library, so it, it just, uh, there, were, there were connections, and, and I'm so impressed with the, the figures that you cited for the increases in circulation, and I did um, take a look at the website in advance of, of the meeting tonight, and I note that this, this is library card sign-up month, so hopefully you even uh, increase those numbers further, and some really interesting um, staff um, picks for, for various books about the importance of libraries, so thank you for your enthusiasm that we've seen here tonight for everything you're doing and look forward to, to seeing uh, new initiatives and continued great work at the library. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. And yes, I echo what everyone has said. And, 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 yeah, and I think I might have mentioned this when, um, when the former director um, talked with us and they had mentioned the increase in circulation and, and had mentioned that we were like the fourth in circulation. And I think it's even better than that because I think if you, you take into account the size of our population, you know, uh, we might rank I mean at number one because we are smaller you know than those other communities I mean and so it's a, it's a good job good, um, it's, it's a good indication of how much people are are using the system I mean and I know because I've seen some preliminary data from the survey I mean um, people really do um, use the library a lot I mean they care about it a lot it may be a function of the fact that the people I mean, who fill out the surveys are people who are inclined to go to libraries We'll see, you know, but anyways, it's, it's great. And, and the more I see about what libraries are doing, I mean, you know, uh, they're really doing a lot to attract people who do tend to get answers to basic questions online. I mean, so I've seen some cases where they're doing 3D you know, printing, you know, and, and really helping people to learn with things that they just can't have at home, I mean, which is I mean, what I think the you know, libraries have always been about, you know, so. So thank you very much. I'm glad that um, we have a great system in uh, where we can draw from um, the inside, even when we compare it to the outside. So, so thank you for being here and for staying. And, and um, with that, um, on a motion to accept you know, um, Ms. Linton in, in the position of library director, director by Ms. Mahan and a second by Mr. Hurd, Mr. Heim. Mr. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mr. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Davis? 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 So, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, we have the minutes for the September 28, 22 meeting. Uh, Reappointments to the Zoning Board of Appeals, terms to expire on uh, October 30, 2025, uh, that will be Christian Klein and Patrick Hanlon. Number five, for approval, Arlington Open Studios Lawn Signs through November 12, 2022, Tom Vormicola, ACA Executive Director, and Annalise Ruggles, ACA Communications Director. Number six, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on October 15, 2022 at Whittemore Robbins House for a private event white mountain ski runners and number seven a request for a special one day license one day beer and white wine license october 22nd 2022 robin's library reading room for a private event rihanna m ash and number eight request special one day beer and wine license november 11th 2022 robin's memorial town hall for a private event dora gamer and so with that you know I'm going to keep an eye on both. First hand up. Mr. Helmuth. They are. Mr. Chair, I'd like to move approval with a brief remark of appreciation for the gentleman we are uh, reappointing tonight to the ZBA. I think they're both joining us in Zoom. I know that we, we're probably not going to speak with them, but I don't want the, the moment to pass without recognizing the hard work that the ZBA does. It's one of certainly the busiest and most demanding town boards, commissions, and committees, and they both perform exemplary service. And uh, I'm thrilled that they are um, rejoining and, 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 uh, and up for more. Um, so I move uh, approval of consent agenda. Okay, great. And I saw Mr. Mahan hand go up, but I also saw Mr. Corsi's hand go up with Mr. Helmet. So you get the second okay. if you want. I'll, I'll yeah. second, Mr. Chairman. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and I, I also will echo uh, Mr. Helmet's remarks. Um, like this, our 
firsthand over the past 18 months that, that the fine work that Mr. Klein and, and Mr. Hanlon have done uh, for the ZBA and uh, I'm really happy that they are willing to, to um, accept reappointments. Okay, and so Ms. Mahan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's ZBA all day, all night. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you to Mr. Klein and Mr. Hanlon. Um, all of us have been to different ZBA meetings in different capacities. It's only Board of Appeals. And, um, I definitely appreciate the, uh, them volunteering their time. We couldn't afford to, to pay them. Um, and I also want to take advantage of the opportunity that we did receive a letter of resignation from one of our Zoning Board of Appeals members. So uh, I will leave that to the chair to um, and the select board office to begin that process of advertising um, and conducting the interviews. Um, but in light of the heavy load, similar to other committees and commissions here in Arlington, that the Zoning Board of Appeals has um, uh I know we'll move on that as expeditiously as we can. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome. And so, um, I'm not saying. Uh, well, Bird. I was going to say the same thing as everyone else. <laughs> so I won't reiterate it, but again, I think the fact that we all read, pulled something off a consent agenda to discuss is certainly a testament to the work that these two gentlemen have done. And again, happy to see them continuing because it's a board where experience matters. So happy to reappoint, be reappointing both to the ZBA. Yes, yes, and, and, and I agree. And, and I mentioned this a couple of times, maybe even more than a couple um, during town meeting, but Mr. Hanlon, I mean, his writing is just such a joy to read. I mean, the, the, he, he, he tends to write a lot, but it's such an easy read and I always learn I mean, uh, a lot when I read um, his, his emails. I mean, uh, so, so definitely happy to have them both joining us uh, or continuing on the, the ZBA. And so on a motion by Mr. Helmuth and a second by Mr. Corsi on the consent agenda, Mr. Hine. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Thank you. Oh, rolling along on to appointments. So for the ACAC Grants Committee, uh, we have Kristen Bedard, time to expire on October 30th, 2025. Yeah. So is Kristen here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, I see you there. All right. Thank you for joining us. Do you want to say a few words? I'm really uh, pleased for this opportunity. I'm a big believer in local community arts and I've had the opportunity to join the committee in several meetings now. And I'm just thrilled for this opportunity to um, be a part of helping the arts flourish in town. Uh, grew up here in Arlington um, and again, just really happy and grateful for this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you. So I'll turn to my colleagues. Uh, see Mr. Hurd's hand. Move approval and welcome. Thank you for stepping up to serve. So I have a motion by Mr. Hurd. Second. And a second by Mr. Corsi. And I see Ms. Mahan hand go up. And you want to say something? Um, I was going to second it, but I, I, I do want to thank uh, Ms. Bedard. Uh, looked over your uh, submissions for, for this position, and I know. It's something this committee you're certainly well versed in and have already contributed so much um, that we really uh, couldn't thank you enough. And again, um, sounds corny, but Arlington truly is blessed by our residents, um, some who have been here, grown up here, and some who um, have moved here later on. Um, and I'm always impressed by the caliber of people, not only by their, their experience, but by their dedication. And I, I just want to thank you, Kristen, for stepping into this and, and helping to continue to make the art flourish here in Arlington. Um, it's amazing because I didn't realize um, how much the committee could be doing until they started doing it. And um, I've come to expect so much and you guys go above and beyond. So uh, thank you so much and thank you for agreeing to do this. Thank you, Diane. Yeah, I just need to get back to the screen with you all. So if someone raised their hand, I didn't see them. So, okay. 
you know. So I, I will um, close by saying, I mean, yes, indeed, we definitely appreciate you, know, you um, joining uh, the commission in, and, and it is great that you have been a resident of Arlington in, and, and um, I am looking through your resume again in your CV and um, it's, it's, it's as with almost everyone that uh, signs up for uh, volunteer work, I mean, um, impressive people in town. And so um, with that, Ian, I will accept the motion by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. Corsi, uh, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Helm? Yes. Mrs. Mama? Yes, thank you. Mr. Davis? Yes. It's you know, Thank you. Take care. So, Mr. Um, Chair. Yes. If I may, um, I'm going to recuse myself on the next one. Uh, Mr. Nagel is lucky enough to be married to my sister Sarah. So, <laughs> though I'm not, I don't have a legal obligation to recuse myself, just in, as in, in in conjunction with past practices, I'm going to recuse myself for the next vote. Okay. And we'll get in touch with you, let you know when we're on to the next item. So, okay, so next we have the to, or appointment to the Arlington Housing Trust Form, Fund, fund uh, uh, Vic Marie Santiago and Jack Nagel, and their terms to expire on October 31st, 2023. So we'll turn first to Vic Marie, if you want to say a few words. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Um, I, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to contribute to this wonderful community. I live in Arlington since 2017. I'm from Puerto Rico. And uh, we felt welcome for, for this community and this is my way that I want to contribute. So I... Thank you. And Mr. Nagel, do you want to say anything? Sure. No, I'm, I'm really looking forward to collaborating with uh, all the members of the Housing Trust and other agencies in town. There's a ton of potential that exists and, you know, selfishly on the Housing Authority side, I think that, you know, there's really a lot of ways in which we could, you know, um, make a big impact by being part of this. So looking forward to it. Thank you. So I'll turn to my colleagues. I already see Mr. Helmuth's hand up. So, so um, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, uh, I, as the, my colleagues know, I'm the select board's designee representative to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. So, I uh, would love to seize the privilege of making the motion um, to uh, to appoint these two exemplary individuals. Um, also, by way of explanation and some background to my colleagues, uh, the board we these are filling two vacancies. One of them happened several months ago, um, and the other one um, a bit more recently. Um, but uh, so Mr. Nagel, of course, is well known to the board and um, will be representing the uh, housing, uh, Arlington Housing Authority. Um, and uh, Ms. Santiago um, is deeply impressive, um, new person to the community that as soon as I read her resume and her letter, I was as, as excited as, as uh, Ms. Linema and Ms. Kelleher were who worked with her. Um, so I am just thrilled to have you both. Uh, to work with as colleagues on this uh, on this board as we do some really exciting work. So thank you for your willingness. Thank you, Mr. Hurd, and I see Ms. Mahan. Hannah. Going to do the phone. So um, I will happily second um, my colleague Mr. Helmut's uh, motion, and I am thrilled by um, both Ms. Santiago and uh, Mr. Nagel. Um, I, growing up, I lived on Gardner Memorial and Freeman, so I didn't know it was Monotony Manor. I knew of Calvin Manor because that was sort of everything I would love to ascribe to. Um, but I know how, what the challenges are in terms of um, not only reaching those who live in our um, housing complexes, but those my family always rented uh, all throughout the time growing up in Arlington. Eggerton Road, Bacon Street, so on and so forth. So um, I know what it's like. And I know sometimes when um, affordability is a main issue for someone, uh, sometimes there is a tendency to not really connect to 
to some of the opportunities that exist and part of that is because trying to get the right voices that can establish that connection and and I think Vic Murray and 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 Jack um I love the both battalions it's sort of a representative of of uh trust um with tenants that Vic Murray has will have and continue to have as well as Mr. Jack over with, with the housing authority I'm thrilled for having that tie-in um not that any other member of the committee also cannot accomplish the same but I I definitely look um as the new young blood on the committee um for the two of you just to add your voices and really uh reaching out not only getting the message across but um uh creating a, an environment of of not acceptability but just getting everybody comfortable to that um we all have the same goal nobody's no better no worse and we're just trying to make everything better for everybody so um i'm really thrilled with you all and um i know you'll be hearing definitely from me and my colleagues in various uh times throughout the year and as always um we re- remain available to you but i'm not going to tell you all how to do your job cuz i've certainly read what you submitted and you're ready to hit the ground running so thank you thank you mr chair you're welcome mr mahan Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just very briefly, I just want to thank Ms. Santiago and Mr. Nagel for their willingness to serve on the on the trust uh, as trustees, and also uh, with these appointments, we truly are now in alignment with the um, the town bylaws in terms of the composition of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. So I'm happy for that and appreciate the work that Mr. Helmuth has done representing us um, on the on the um, on the trust. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. And, and, and actually, my favorite part about, uh, well, one of my favorite parts about uh, being on a select board is, is reading uh, the, the CVs and getting a chance to comment on them because cause anyone can read them. You know, but I get to say it, a few things. Uh, and first off, uh, uh, for Vic Marie, love the format of your CV. I'm going to imitate it. Uh, it's just really laid out very nicely. And, 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 and uh, with the skills and software, it's just, I like it. I like it a lot. And then, of course, there's a substance to it, which is very impressive. I mean, and, and, and there was a word I wanted to look up that I just haven't had a chance to yet, photogrammetry. You know, so can you just tell me quickly what that is? Yeah, photogrammetry. Yeah, it is a composition of different uh, photos, and you can create virtual 3D models. Oh, cool. Nice, nice. You know, well, I, mean, I think I me, mean, I mean, certainly the architectural background I mean, will come in handy I mean, in, in, in just thinking about housing and what, what we, can, we can do with housing and affordable housing to make it, you know, well, make, it, make the housing that people live in dignified. I because mean, just because it's affordable doesn't mean that it has to look or feel I mean, any worse I mean, than, than something that costs a lot less. You know? And so, uh, so I think. I think that'll be certainly something that you could help us with, not only in Arlington, but, but just in general, I mean, community-wide um, and region-wide. And so thank you very much, I mean, and Mr. Nagel, you know, the, you're, um, you're just all over the place in terms of stuff that you've done. I mean, and you, you strike me as, as a person that can not only have that handle abstractions, I mean, but also can, can get in there and, and do the, the work with your hands. I mean, I'm pretty much just an abstract guy. And so fixing a light pole is like, I would call John you know, or Jack as you, you say that you are. I mean, so, so I was just curious though, because given your background, how did you get into this field? Well, I, well, I worked for the Department of Transitional Assistance before I worked for the Housing Authority. And while I was there, I was getting my master in public administration and then realized that a housing authority, you touch not only the, the public administration in regards to you know, capital planning, trying to impact you know, the community in general, but then you also do the social service aspect too. So it seemed like the, um, every, everything in one, so that it really, that's what pushed me in that direction. Great, great. Well, well, thank you. Thank you both. I mean, and so on a motion to accept the appointments by Mr. Helmuth and a second by Ms. Wahan. Mr. Hine. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helm. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Davis. Yes. 
It's a four of zero vote. Note for the record, please, that Mr. Hurd recused himself from both the discussion and the vote. Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys. Take care. And so, all right. So, Mr. Hurd is back, and then we'll move on to item number 11, Board of Registers, and Rebecca Belt, Beltlion, Beltlion, term to expire on March 31st, 2025. Rebecca? Yeah, hold on. No problem. Hello. Hi. Did Am I, I on? Get, did I get the pronunciation <laughs> of your last name correct? Oh, I need a pin. It's asking me for a pin. Um, my last name is Betleon. Betleon. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Betleon. Betleon. Yes, Thank hi. Thank you. So, so you want to say a few words? Uh, sure. Uh, so I lived in Arlington for the past 11 years. Uh, I'm a single working mom, and my daughter is a sophomore at the high school. Um, she started at uh, the Thompson, at Stratton and then Thompson, and now she's at the high school. Um, I've also lived in Arlington back 93 to 98, and I worked in Arlington from 91 since 1991 to present a cumulative of about 25 years in uh, Arlington. So I know the community. I know a lot of children and families. I know a lot of children that probably are a lot older <laughs> now that I might not recognize. Uh, but when I heard that this position was going to be open, um, I've always been a civics and a uh, history buff. And so I thought, you know what, I, I'm interested in doing this. And I talked to Phil Lahones um, on the RTC and also John Warden, who uh, held the position before he resigned. And it sounded like something that I would be willing to do. I've never served in, in government, in any kind of capacity in a town town government. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to serve the people in my community and uh, the town of Arlington. Thank you. So I see Ms. Mahan hand up. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd definitely like to move approval of Ms. Betleon's appointment to the Board of Registrars, along with my thanks. Um, elections and uh, uh, have always been very important, having, having grown up in Arlington. And, uh, but uh, election officials' uh, jobs certainly have grown exponentially and um, really have never been so vital as they are right now. And, and we need the proper balance. Uh, we need the dedication that Ms. Beth Leon has. Um, are you a Rebecca or a Becky? I'm Rebecca. I'm Becca. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Rebecca is fine. Rebecca. I, I have a Rebecca, so she, she goes by four different names, so that's yep, okay. Yep, yep. Um, but <laughs> I, I do want to um, thank you. Um, I know you know the importance of this position. Um, again, I sort of, not sort of, grown up here. Um, one of my other first jobs when I was newly married was uh, working for my husband's aunt in Mahan Powers just as an election worker, and I sort of got a little introduction to to me, election was you go in and vote, whoever's sitting there checks you off. Um, I didn't know anything about the Board of Registrars, but now, um, first as a parent and then as an elected official, I've certainly A, seen the importance and B, seen that um, position along with other elected officials' positions really grow and become vital. So um, this is, again, one of the uh, committees. It's not a committee. It's a board, one of the boards. Uh, especially around elections, that's really vital. Uh, I know you'll do a, a fantastic job, um, and I, I can tell that you definitely have the acumen to um, really go in, clean slate, and eye on the prize, which is ensuring our elections and uh, making sure everybody who wants to can vote. Um, so I thank you very much, Ms. Betleon. Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hurd. I'd like to say, second that motion, and again, just reiterate everything that Mrs. Mahan said very eloquently, and just thank you for your willingness to serve. You're welcome. And anyone else? Okay, well, I will simply say uh, thank you also, and, uh, and uh, uh, just so you know, you know, it can become a very exciting gig, because in my, election you know uh 
There was a recount. And so you got to spend the uh, uh, long, I forget what day of the week it was, but it was a nice long day hearing your know, hand counted ballots. And so so, so uh, I got to uh, get another glimpse of why this role um, is important. So, so, uh, so thank you very much. And, uh, and so on a motion to uh, accept the appointment by Ms. Mahan and a second by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Hein. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helm. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Davis. Yes. It's your unanimous vote. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Good night. Good night. Cool. Item number 12, CDBG subcommittee appointment, Judith Gilu. Yes, hi. Hi. <laughs> did I get that right? <laughs> yes, oh. absolutely. I did? Thank you. Sorry? How do you pronounce it again? Gilu? You, Giyu. Gilu. Okay, all right. I'm not doing it quite right, but a little closer than no, before. That's you fine. Know, so, so, do you want to say a few words? Yes, sure. Um, so, uh, I arrived with my family in Arlington 11 years ago from France. And um, I'm a lawyer by training, a business lawyer by training in France. But then moving to the US, I had to uh, kind of reinvent what I could be doing. Um, so I started volunteering uh, almost, I would say, professionally. Like uh, I worked for um, Planned Parenthood for two years and a half uh, on their hotline. Um, then I worked for Real uh, for the French consulate. And, um, and four years ago, I started uh, working for the Department of Children and Families, um, mostly from the office in Arlington. And um, now through COVID, we moved through WebEx and we cover the whole Massachusetts. And uh, through that work, um, I reviewed the situation of kids in foster care. Um, so I became very aware of um, the problem of fair housing and um, economic opportunities and things like that. Um, and during COVID, I also volunteered at uh, EATS, the food pantry in Arlington. Uh, and through them, I received their newsletter and that's how I, I got um, wind of the opportunity to serve with the um, sorry, with the CDBG subcommittee. And I thought, oh, that could be a good way for me to understand better how my town works. Um, one year ago, we became American citizens. So I took a class with the Arlington uh, Community Education um, that was actually called a Guide to Town Government. And uh, I, uh, I couldn't see right away how I could serve and give back to a community that really welcomed us so well. Um, and then this opportunity happened. So I thought, uh, let's give it a try. And maybe I can mix my uh, experience with uh, DCF on one hand and my experience as a lawyer on the other hand uh, to try to help Arlington community. Great. Well, well thank you very much, Mean. And so, uh, we have two colleagues here who are from the select board that are on the on the committee so i'm going to just go to them I mean, for the motion in a second so mr hurd hands up so mr hurd thank you i'd like to move approval and again welcome and thank you for your willingness to serve my dad was on the then board of selectmen and the select, now select board for a long time and when i first got elected he said to me get on the cdbg committee it's the okay. best way to be on because all you get to do is give out money to people. Everyone loves people on the CDBG committee. And it, it, you know, it's a great committee and it's really important the things we do because we do get a lot more requests than we generally have funds for. So we do have to do some work and kind of prioritize things. But it's also a lot of the money we give is spent in the year that we give it. We see the immediate benefit of the work that we do and the immediate impact of the funds that we're able to give out to the community directly to the community so it is a it is a good committee to serve on mm -hmm. and I look forward to working with you thank you thank you mr hurt and, and Ms. mahan i will definitely second my colleague mr hurt's motion um and he, he covered a lot of it but i, I want to thank you mr Guillaume. um 
for and uh, look forward to meeting you. When CDBG first started out, we would meet once a year. We're now up to um, anywhere from three plus times a year. Um, meet to vote, so sometimes that means four to six meetings, and that's because of uh, the times that we're in when new federal funding um, on top of the CDBG funds, like the CARES Act, you know, everything out of COVID, but now there's also other packages being discussed. And um, the other thing that uh, CDBG has sort of evolved into, and I think you would be a great person doing this with your background, not someone like you who's grown up in Arlington and, you know, has sort of put their toe in a lot of different pools, so I know what's out there. But the other thing is a lot of people um, don't know uh, what grants we give out, what programs, social programs um, are available to them. So we sort of have become advocates for um, either answering questions, but sometimes just going out and advocating for these programs, and you will be a good ombudswoman um, to do that. So I thank you so much um, with your congratulations on your citizenship. I'm a court reporter, so I have all due respect for attorney Esquire, um, and I look forward to seeing you real soon on the CBD subcommittee meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank Welcome. You. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, I also want to uh, thank Ms. Guillaume for your willingness to serve. Congratulations on your citizenship and, and for your volunteerism uh, in, in the past year. And, and I think you will find, I, I haven't made it onto the CDBG subcommittee yet, but I, I hear it's really interesting work and I know they will value um, what you bring to the subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so I will say a few words and, and, and of course I express my appreciation and, and, and um, again, I mean, a, a very in, impressive resume and on CV and, and I have to say I mean, the Mercuria trading uh, line, uh, it, I, I, mean, I, I was really fascinated by that. I'm reading the line and then I see the ellipses. And I thought, wow, it's like, it's so interesting that, that she just couldn't include it all. And it just makes me want to more and more. It's a, it's, I think I'm going to have to use that technique I mean, sometimes, you know, on my CV. It's, 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 a, it's the first time I've seen this very clever use of ellipses. But also, I mean, uh, uh, the volunteerism, I mean, uh, it, it was really impressive. I mean, and and uh, the, the plan parent aspect in particular because of I mean, the the, the, the great work that you do in helping people with, S, um, with I mean, STIs, I mean, um, and as you said, you give people objective information to deal with I mean, difficult decisions, I mean, and so, so that in and of itself makes me feel that I mean, having someone who understands I me, mean, um, challenging, the challenging positions that people can be in, I think will make a really good candidate, you know, good person on the, um, on the committee, and I also noticed that you uh, have been involved with the Arlington Relay for Life, I mean, so you really have been involved with the community, so thank you very much, I mean, and, and um, I enjoy reading uh, what CDBG does, I mean, when they report out, I mean, so I will not be competing, you know, for a position on a committee, I'll just let the people who are good at it continue doing their good work, I mean, and you'll be one of them. So with that, on a motion by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mrs. Mahan, um, to accept her appointment, Judith Gill appointment, uh, Mr. Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Heim. Yes. Yes. Mr. Mahan. Yes. yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Welcome. So on to open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation. In accordance with the policy underneath, under which the open forum was established, it should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. I mean, so do we have anyone? Seeing no hands raised. Oh, maybe one. <laughs> I don't have a name. It's a phone in listener. All right. So. All right. Hello? Uh, yes, hello. Am I unmuted? 
Richard? Yes. Can you? Okay. Uh, this is yeah. This is Steve Moore. Uh, I live on Piedmont Street and a member of the Arlington Tree Committee. Um, I have two things I'd like to quickly uh, speak on tonight. First is, you might remember about uh, three weeks, a month ago, a uh, uh, 261 Hillside Ave item came up numerous times. It was continued and then recontinued. And I've seen nothing on the agenda lately, and I'm wondering what the status of that item is from either uh, Mr. Heim or whoever might know about that, maybe Mr. Pooler? Well, generally we don't answer questions you know, during open forum, you know, and so we'll certainly take that as um, something you know, to answer in, in potentially the next meeting since you've asked me, and I'm certainly curious about that myself. But so um, anything else? Uh, well, it was continued to tonight and it's not on the agenda. That's why I'm asking. I mean, it's not on the agenda, so it wasn't continued to tonight. I mean, um, so, so. Oh, I, I, I believe, I, I thought it was. Okay, well then, yeah. never mind. I am still interested in that particular item and its disposal. But the second thing I wanted to speak on was just to, to add my voice to your voices relative to the reappointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I am uh, uh, the tree committee's liaison to that board, so I attend all of the meetings. And I've been doing that probably for close to two years now, maybe a year and a half. And um, the two gentlemen, Mr. Klein and, uh, and Mr. Hanlon, I, it is so impressive the dedication and hard work that they put into this. Um, as, you, as you pointed out, Mr. Mr. Chair, the uh, opinions are critical and well-written, and, and they have to be just right, and they almost always are. The multiple 40B projects that have been on, their, on the table uh, the past two years, plus now a new one coming up um, that I've heard about, um, just the, these men work very hard, and the whole board works very hard, and I just wanted to say I've been so impressed by the professionalism of that board with, uh, uh, that I've been exposed to over the past year and a half. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Moore. So I don't see anyone else. All right. Yeah, so we move on yeah, um, to an update by me on the town manager search process. Yeah, so we um, are moving forward at a nice pace. I think we are on track with our timeline. It, uh, it, and uh, probably tomorrow, um, if not, then then certainly early next week, we, we will put, be putting out an announcement of a forum a, for our residents a, so that they can give us some input as to what they would like to see uh, in our next town manager. A, uh, uh, the format of the, forum, of the forum has not been completely determined yet. A, uh, we, Mr. Corsi and myself will be meeting with the consultant a, uh, to work that out. A, uh, um, and, there will also be a survey going out, and uh, it will extend at least a week before the forum, and and extend probably a week after the forum, and and, and so uh, we'll be collecting data that way. And the goal still is to get the statement out uh, at the beginning of December, probably the first week in December. Uh, it may very well be that we will want to have a brief meeting. Uh, to discuss the draft collectively uh, before um, it goes out. But the intention right now is when uh, the draft statement is created uh, for the consultants to meet with us individually to get our feedback. And if after meeting with us individually, there's a desire to, um, well, we feel that we need to have more discussion as a group, then we'll pull off that meeting. You know? So, so um, that's it. At, this point, so if there are any questions, you know, I'm happy to hear them. Okay, all right, you know, so uh, thank you. And uh, the next update is on a potential overnight parking pilot. So I'm gonna read something that I wrote and sent over to Mr. Corsi and, and I could just talk about 
the content of it, but I think um, reading it, I won't miss anything. And, and uh, right now, the, I, based on what we discuss, the, I will adjust what I've written and then put that into uh, the document for the next meeting. You know, and, 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 and then if it warrants a vote, uh, we can vote on it. But the intention is not to vote on anything now because you're just seeing, you're just hearing this. And so we can have as much of a discussion as we want now, but potentially have more of a discussion next week. And then if we decide that we want to vote, uh, vote on it. But that will be the agenda that will have a vote item or the vote word in the line item. So, so here we go. Um, so after several discussions with the town manager, uh, the director of public works, the chief of Arlington Police Department, um, Captain Kiernan and Officer Ruto, uh, we, that is Mr. Corsi and myself, have concluded that if we are to move forward with implementing a pilot to explore reducing restrictions on overnight parking, then we do so beginning next May at the earliest for the following reasons. One, it allows us to have more conversations with the community, both formally and informally. And two, it gives us the necessary time to work out processes and details with DPW, APD, the Treasurer's Office, the Parking Department, and the Select Board's Office. Tentatively, we are thinking that the pilot would run for four to six months. After that, we would assess the pilot as well as obtain feedback from residents and staff and, determine, and then determine whether to, one, maintain or not change the current overnight parking pilot policy, two, change the overnight parking policy in accordance with the factors that we've learned from the pilot, or three, conduct another, another pilot. Were we to decide on changing our overnight parking restrictions, those changes likely would not go into effect until January 2024. Similarly, another pilot would likely not take place until sometime in 2024. As we discuss the possibility of doing the pilot next year, please note that we will need to adjust the way in which the town charges residents who utilize the municipal lots for overnight parking. For those who pay on an annual basis, we would adjust the annual fee based on the length of the pilot. For example, if we adopted a four-month pilot, we would reduce the annual charge by one-third. Of course, this would require coordination with the treasurer's office and or the parking department and possibly the select board's office. So even if we won't be ready to make a decision and to commit to doing the pilot as long as doing the pilot during the middle of 2023 is a possibility we should start the coordination with those departments as soon as possible so as i said we can discuss um this tonight as much as we want and, uh, but next week we'll need to uh, at least decide on how to whether we want to contact me, the treasurer's office, me, and the parking department and tell them to be prepared to, to um, charge people less for a, the upcoming year in anticipation that we may do the pilot so that we aren't in a situation where people have paid and then we have to refund because that's a, little, that's a bit more complicated than just not taking the money in the first place. So um, with that, and I'll open it up. Well, as I say um, to folks from my experience, oh, there's a hand. Okay, Ms. Mahan. Uh, please don't take my silence as anything except for, um, I'm gonna assume that after tonight, we'll all receive a copy of what the chair has just read so that we can um, go over it. Uh, I, I was paying close attention, but the, um, I want to thank you for all the details that are included in there. Um, and my brain just kind of froze at about the fourth intersection of the different action steps that, that you've outlined um, in terms of um, possibilities. So what I'd like to do is um, definitely uh, I'll read and reread uh, the materials that you've prepared for us. And I'll definitely have comments and, and or questions at the next meeting where we have this as an agenda item. So um, sure. I, I don't want to, you know, start asking questions and then I have retained everything you said and I ask a really dumb question instead of just a dumb one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, no problem. And I appreciate that. I mean, and, and, um, and I'll say that one of the reasons that I 
didn't put this out was because he, I wasn't sure if I was want, going to want to edit it more um, before presenting it tonight. And, uh, and, and so uh, I wouldn't, once it, we had put it out two days from ago, and it would have been locked down. And, and, and due to um, some personal, well, I was just traveling more than I expected to. And, um, last few weeks and so I wasn't able to get this to Mr. Corsi until. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I, I, we may have lost the other members for, for a moment um, on the Zoom. Uh. Check the vice power. Sure. No. I can only hear you <laughs> through the laptop and you're no longer up on the screen. And I can't see you. <laughs> oh. oh, you're back. Yeah. I still see them. Hear us now? Yeah. Yeah, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So then I'll turn to um, Mr. Heim uh, uh, to find out I mean, when, when is the earliest I can get what I, that statement that I read to my colleagues? When's the earliest you can distribute it? Yeah. Um, I think if it's just for informational purposes, if you distribute it through the uh, your administrator, you can distribute it for just information. Okay. What you can't engage is a substantive discussion. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. So then I can get that out I mean, tomorrow. You know, I'll send it to you tonight or tomorrow morning. And then, okay, great. So then, so then you all can get it, I mean, and then, and then um, we can have a robust discussion. I mean, and and, and um, I, I'm sorry, I, I see this too. See Sean in here. We're, we can keep going. Okay, all right. Uh, so we're all set to go. So, um, any other comments or questions? All right. All right. Well, well. Thanks for your attention. And, and we'll move on to item number fifteen. And and, and um, so we're going to um, try and stay on top of some sections of our goals. You uh, know, and 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 so. Uh, this one, as I said, is going to be an emphasis on public communications, customer service, and resident engagement. And, and the one thing I want to have us try to work through, and probably won't get through tonight, is how to handle email. And uh, because uh, uh, we have situations where people send um, us all email. You know, and when the email comes to all of us, I feel that it is my responsibility as chair to either um, respond to it or ask one of you to respond to it. And I'm fine with that if everyone else is fine with that. You know, uh, in the cases where only one of us gets it, or let me rephrase that, when we, we, we receive an email hey, with just one of us in the two field, sometimes it's not clear whether everyone else has received it or not, you know? And, and so, uh, the, of course, nothing I say will stop anyone from responding however they want. The, the goal, though, is to, one, the, reduce the inefficiency the, if five of us receive the same message, but we're not aware of the other ones receiving it, the, but also to make the answer potentially available should we find a, that answer useful. A, and and I, I want to have the conversation in public, well, one, because we need to, but also because a, it'll be helpful to have the input from the town council as to what we can do um, within the confines of open meeting law. And let me just back up a little bit and say that uh, recently we did create an alias me, for uh, the administrative staff, me, so then people go to the website, they can send mail to, to Lauren um, and Ashley and, and, and Marie through the SB at men alias. He, I am considering asking me that we also create an alias me, for all of us, me, so that, me, that one address will go to all of us, 
and, and, and also um, to the administrative staff. And the reason I say that is because I've been informed by the staff that any mail that they get is automatically included into uh, the, the record. And, and, and so it is searchable through Nova's agenda, correct, Ashley? You know, and, and if people ask for it to be included in our meetings to correspond to receive, I mean, then that's when it's put on the agenda. That's the only time it would be put on. An email that's just sent to us wouldn't just automatically be put on an agenda. Right. Unless they ask to be placed on correspondence received. Right, right. But, but if they don't ask for it to be correspondence received, it's still put into... If it pertains to something on the agenda. Right, okay. I mean, um, so, so, so then it's really a matter of how do we... I'm sorry. Was no, it? Sorry. Okay. I was honestly just clearing my throat. Mr. Okay, no problem. Okay, so 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 then it really is a matter of how we want to track emails that we get that people don't want included on the agenda. So if a citizen sends you an email, right. we don't see that. The right. only emails we see are if they go to SB admin right. or us individually. Right. But if they send it to SB admin, but they don't request that it be put on the as they don't ask that it be indicated as correspondence received, then it doesn't get me, okay. Me. There are some things that don't necessarily need to be placed on correspondence received. Right. If it's something we could answer within the office. Right. And doesn't need a board vote or a referral to another committee. Right. We would handle it administratively. Right, right, right. If it needs a referral to TAC or we think the board outside of board info on a Friday. Right. Other than that, for example, you know, the one that's on correspondence received tonight. Right. They had asked to be on correspondence received where it could potentially need a vote from a different board. Right. But needs referral from the select board. Right. If it's an email regarding just questions about parking or something we can answer that doesn't need a vote of the board, that would not be, we would not put that on as correspondence received. Right. Mr. Hine? Mr. Chair, if I can just say one thing. Sure. The, only, the only thing that I would just add as a preliminary to this discussion is that the board chair still controls the agenda. So to the extent that correspondence received gets put on an agenda and is addressed by the board, it's up to the board to decide what's on its agenda. That doesn't mean that correspondence hasn't been received. I understand that you're making some, you're, you guys are discussing how you want to handle different parts of public correspondence. But I just want to sort of separate the fact that correspondence is received from its placement on the agenda as a matter that gets some kind of public acknowledgement and discussion at a uh, meeting of the board. Does that make sense? I was up to you right until the last, I guess I'm trying to understand the distinction that you're making, you know, so. I, I, I had it and then I, th I, then I thought I had it and then I lost it at the very end. So. So just, maybe just repeat the last two sentences. So the, the, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Sure. The board receives a lot of correspondence. Right. The, the real meaningful difference between correspondence received, and, as we term it, and all the other correspondence the board gets isn't necessarily who exactly it goes to. It's its placement on the agenda as a matter that is going to be in some way, shape, or form publicly addressed, even if it's just, we received this letter from so-and-so, it's duly received. Right. Um, so I, I just want to caution that, that, that the distinction between who gets sent what. We get a lot of correspondence, for example, from the state or from, you know, another authority that might only go to the chair of the select board because of the nature of right. the correspondence. Right. Um, that does, some of that makes its way onto the agenda because it requires some action on the board. Right. Some of it doesn't require any action on the board. Right. It's obviously correspondence, and it's obviously received. Right. The difference is, is that it's not put on the agenda as something that's going to be publicly addressed by the board. Right. Um, and I understand that part of what you're talking about is trying to discern what criteria are going to make it be on the agenda and what aren't. But I just, I just want to be clear that part of it is always going to be discretionary. Right. And, and really what I'm getting at, though, is, is how is it that email mean to the board can be placed in a location where it is searchable I mean, and people can find it. 
because my understanding now is that the only way to search me for email that has been sent to the board is if it's on Nova's agenda. Are so. you, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, are you suggesting that searchable by board members or searchable by all other persons? Uh, both. Okay. Particularly board members, but also I mean, also also the public since I mean, since anything sent to us is part of the public record anyways. I mean, uh, uh, if I may, Mr. Yes, Chair, uh, there may be some things that are not part of the public record automatically in the sense that there are many exemptions to the public records laws. If you get sent sensitive information, especially if it's something about like an employee, for example, that isn't automatically something that the board has to make right. searchable and discoverable. Right. Usually we get a request, the records access officer, Mr. Feeney, typically, um, you know, runs through a process to make sure that this is something that does not, that is not exempt from disclosure. Right. Yeah, so, so anything, I mean, clearly there is sensitive stuff that we get from you, for example, that wouldn't be, but, but any, any other email, I mean, I'm just trying to, to discern, trying to get emails sent to us made more easily available, I mean, to ourselves and others. And I'm going to stop now because I have more to say, but I see Mr. Hurd's hand up. Mr. Hurd? Yeah, I just, I mean, I guess I'm two different points here. One correspondence received, and I mean, that is a part of the agenda that went back to the time when it was items that were mailed to the select office. It was literally before email. So there's just, as the attorney had confirmed, there's no, we have confusion sometimes among residents that says, you know, my email was supposed to be on correspondence received. There's no right to have or obligation of the select board to put any correspondence on correspondence received. That's just, that's really just another an opportunity for whoever the chair is or the office to put certain correspondence in front of the board. So, I mean, I think in continuing with past practices, we would have either items that are sent to the board that a board member forwards to the chair, forwards to the office and says, please put this on correspondence received or items that the chair or the board want to put in front of the board. It is not necessarily a situation where someone sends us an email and says, please put this on correspondence receive. I think in most cases we would do that, but it's not a requirement. Um, in as far as our, I don't think there, I have certainly nothing to hide in my email that people can log in and, and see what I, I get emailed to me. But I mean, there's public records requests for particular emails where people can put our public re records request on a certain subject and we have to produce any emails that we have. I don't know that there's a desire or really if it's the right of of citizens to just go through all of our emails. And like Attorney Heim said, there's the emails that are sensitive, there's emails that have to be determine whether or not they can be disclosed. So I think to, to the extent that people want to see our emails, if it pertains to a particular subject, they can do a public records request. And, and then we have a public, we have so many of these requests that we have a public records office officer that handles these requests. And that's how people would access our emails. But I don't think there would be any place either on our agendas or on the town website where some people where people would just be able to search any emails that we we have received without them being produced via the public records request process and i think that's how generally they receive our emails and to as far as who responds we get emails that have all of us on it and we can't reply all because of the open meeting law. So, I mean, I think it's just the discretion of individual board members, what emails they wanna to respond to. There could be instances where me and Eric have the same thing, wanna to respond to do two different emails and we can respond to that person individually. I don't think we need a coordinated effort because there's emails that I respond to and some emails that either tone or subject matter, I decide not to respond to it. Again, that's, that's a member, that's the discretion of the individual board members. So I, I mean, I'm, so I'm just, I'm not sure we need a centralized 
way of handling that outside of how it's handled currently. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. You're welcome. Can you give me the chance to um, 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 turn, turn on my video? video? Yeah. yeah. I lost, I lost it. it. Yeah, I can. I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so that way, Mr. Hurd can see me like nodding me when I'm agreeing with them. You know, so um, Ms. Mahine. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I can see it. Maybe you're shaking if you don't agree, but um, <laughs> I've, I'm very hesitant and not in favor of adding another sort of email communication vehicle. Um, I know. We all have our email addresses. Then we have our town email addresses, which I did not want um, for the case in point of what happens now, which is I'm, a, I'm at a you know 30 to 50 percent rate of people who contact me through the town email um, that I get it. Um, and I don't know, maybe if this is something Mr. Cooler, our town manager, and um, our new IT director could possibly solve. It was a sort of a promise or a, uh, when it was first posed about myself having the town email account, I was afraid it would slip through the cracks along with my Verizon account. And I was told that IT could very easily, um, if anyone emails me at my dmahan, whatever it is, town.arlington.maus, that um, the IT department could automatically, when that comes in, send it to my Verizon account so that I wouldn't miss any of those. Well, that's never happened. And I know I've run uh, across um, at least a dozen times a year that either somebody else gives me a heads up or the person, um, either I do, do finally get through the town account or they email me at Verizon and then I explain my apologies, I didn't get it. So my fear is creating this third opportunity. It's going to be yet another way that... Um, somebody could fall uh, through the cracks. So I don't know, maybe I, I would, would ask Mr. Cooler or you, Mr. Chairman, to con if, he, if he could contact the IT director and see if there is any way um, when the first discussions came about this new town email account, which is now an old town meeting account, um, I was told it was a very simple fix. So. Um, they could get forwarded so I can make sure I get it. That hasn't happened. So I'd like that to be looked into. If it's a cumbersome process, then it won't. So um, I'm, I'm not in favor of having yet another one, as well as Mr. Hurd outlined the open meeting law concerns. Um, I think uh, in terms of emails, I, I like the new, what the chair in the select board office has set up, for, sort of an administrative SB admin um, email. Uh, account. I think that's great, and, and we should continue on with that. That's something that I, um, myself and current and former colleagues, really pushed the former town manager, Mr. Chaplain, to sort of set up to try to get some things off his platter that never came to fruition. So, um, and I know I've had conversations with Mr. Cooler about that. Um, but I think, in terms of, I understand what you're saying in terms of emails. If you know, if we all get it individually. And how many of us respond, respond, that's fine. I know I've always had a practice, even before email, it used to be there off this to send it out, but um, I consulted with town council that I can't directly email you all, but if I truly get something, A, that I'm not answering, opining, or giving a position on, and B, it's purely information that as long as I funnel it through the select board office, to staff and say, please forward to my colleagues as an FYI. Or if I get something that is sensitive, as town council pointed out, and, and maybe employee information or um, stories or anything like that, that's something that I send to um, either town council or the town manager, and under their discretion it gets forwarded. So I, I think if we create yet a third opportunity, um, it's, you know, I, it wouldn't be helpful for me because I'm still falling behind on my Verizon account and my town email account. And I think one of the worst things is that, I mean, if we choose not to respond to somebody, then that we choose to do that. And, you know, whatever ire or whatever we encounter, then 
we understand that but i'm just afraid there's going to be yet another opportunity there's already one where things for me fall through the cracks and this is just going to add a third one so um i may lose this fight because that's why i didn't want the town to bail it out um because i was told don't worry if that won't happen and it's an easy fix well it does happen and it can't get fixed so i'm i'm just not in favor of this i think um uh I'll stop there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was shaking my head at me because it's not really a matter of losing a fight. I mean, it's really it, this is it, more for us to just kind of determine if we want to change the way he, that we handle emails and and maybe we'll gradually change in one direction or another, or maybe not. I mean, uh, but I do want to to, um, to say that I mean, when in the cases where we all get email and it's, and it's it's a fairly, let's say, straightforward and, um, kind of email. I mean, for me, if I know that one person is responding, I, mean, I would just assume not respond, you know, because it's like it's dealt with, you know, and we don't see, see each other. I mean, and so I don't necessarily know that someone has responded. I think you all have seen a few cases where there's been a transportation-related email, and I'll email you all saying, I'll take care of it. And that's not to say to anyone, don't respond. You can go ahead and respond, but it's also to let you know that if you are wondering whether someone's going to respond, at least you know that 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 I am planning on responding. And so, for me, then it would be good if my response was also logged somewhere, me, so that you could go and see the response, me, so that you, you would not only know that's been responded to, but you'd also know the, the nature of response, so that if a similar question came up. Me, you could go and search and see the answer me, and, and respond yourself. Like maybe you're having a conversation with someone and you're like, oh, well, this came up. Me, Len responded. I kind of re remember that it was worth, you know, it was a decent response. I mean, and so you'd have a way of getting that information. So that's, that's the rationale behind trying to create kind of a repository me, for the information. Me. And I'll say just today, there have been a couple of cases where I was thinking, well, it'd be good for people to know about this. So we had, uh, one case where I mean, someone I mean, um, just like, I guess they are jackhammering a wall or something, I mean, and it's been going on for a while, I mean, and, and there's an issue. And so they, they have reached out I me mean, for I mean, some advice or some, for, for the time to deal with it. I mean, and the second one is escaping me um, right now. Uh, uh, it might come back to me, but, but anyways, I mean, these were things where I felt that it would be good for you to know about them because they came to me you know, as chair and, and I think one was CC to the town manager. I mean, and so I felt that it would be good for folks to see this I mean, and then to see uh, the, the responses. So I was just trying to create a mechanism I mean, so that folks were more aware I mean, of the communications that were going on and the information that goes along with them because I thought the information, I mean, the responses from the town manager um, were good. You know? Oh, the other one was involving the the, the uh, electricity, the, uh, the ACE program, you know, and, and so, so that's the, that's, that's the rationale for having the discussion, you know. Right. No, but I, I'm just saying we had that conversation when emails started coming to the forefront, and what, 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 what town council advised is kind of what I do, which is, um, I think, I know all of you have gotten emails from the select board office from me, um, but like on the ACE program, the electricity program, as well as the Jack Herring, Himmering, um, I know we're all aware of that. Um, so I, I would like to just continue with uh, the process that the board has been doing, which is if you think it's information that, you know, you kind of have a Benny and, and the rest of the board doesn't know and you think we should, then funnel it through the select board's office, ask them to forward it to us um, as an FYI. But like forwarding on the... Arlington Community Electricity Program. We all are well aware of that. Um, I'm, you know, ever since uh, the uh, Fed uh, raised the interest rate, and then uh, National Grid and NSAR said we're increasing 62 and 88 percent. Um, I, like you all, I mean, I probably get weekly anywhere from eight to 14 people asking me about ACE and, and the town's electricity program. And I wouldn't send those all to you because you all know that information. You know, that's me just doing my job, which you would do the exact same job. So 
um, like I would just say, I, I would put in a, a plug for, um, if, you, if any one of us gets an email and it's sort of new information, you know, how do I get a town day booth application? I'm not gonna forward that to you all because it's, it's not that, but uh, on something that's sort of pressing and, and brand new, um, whether it's like Mugar, if I get something with Al Wife CSOs or anything like that. I mean, you all know what you get from me, that it says, please forward to my colleagues as an FYI. Um, and to me, that's a, hey, I got this heads up. I'm sending it to you, which I think is what I'm hearing um, the chairman speak to. Um, I think doing it that way versus saying everything that everybody gets goes somewhere as a repository. Um, I think it's, it, I wouldn't, it's not something that I would ask for. Thank yeah, you, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Yeah, 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 no, I appreciate, I appreciate that. that. And, and, the and the intention, intention isn't to have everything go on there. Uh, it would more so be like the cases where someone did forward it because they felt that it was worthy mean, of, of being transmitted to, to their colleagues. Mean. And right now, that simply goes to us. Mean, and and mean, mean, no one else really has access to it. And by that, I would think, by anyone else, I'm thinking maybe colleagues coming along Later on, I mean, who aren't on the board now, I mean, if there was a way they could search I me, mean, like we can search I me mean, for items I mean, on the agenda through the Nervous, the Novus agenda platform, then they would have access to, to the, 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 the issue and, and the response. I mean, so, so I'm really not trying to create I me mean, more traffic. I mean, I'm, I'm really just trying to create a, a way for us to access me the useful information that's in the email that is being forwarded me, or received me so so that's it so look, this is just an idea you know and so so hey i'm not expecting us to vote or anything on it i'm just kind of putting it out there something for us to discuss and see if there's potentially a way to uh, make the email uh, the information we get for email more available and, and more useful for us so that's it yeah. mr helmuth Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks for raising the issue. I, I do appreciate some, just the workflow um, problem that you raised. I've, you know, I've noticed it myself. So there are some built-in inefficiencies for each of the five of us having public email addresses, which I love, by the way, um, myself. Um, but you know, we because of because of the opening law, we can't copy each other on responses, so we don't we don't know who's responded to what unless you know unless somebody tells somebody in a non-substantive way what that is. Uh, the one common thread in this is that for a lot of routine requests, I routinely uh, let our town staff do their job and I will forward requests to the town manager um, for, for information because they know it firsthand. There's no sense in my, you know, trying to pretend like I know anything. Um, and so in that, in that, in those cases, the town manager and his team, uh, his or her team can, can um, deal with the duplication and I think, you know, copy and paste as, as needed for, for responses. Um, I, I think it might be useful, Mr. Chair, to think about, you know, our, our role identifying the business needs, as we would say in industry, um, the operational and workflow needs, and maybe it may be lean on our town staff um, to propose solutions that maybe we haven't considered tonight. I do have some, some serious concerns about the idea of any kind of automatic repository, and I think if I understand town councils, uh, Attorney Himes cautions correctly. We couldn't just dump those, you know, those in. We can't have an unvetted open access uh, access to anyone's email box for for various legal reasons and important ones. Um, you know, perhaps you know something that would be a whole other product and a whole other uh, function of a website. You know, would be kind of a screened and vetted manually maintained um, you know database of things. But that might be an overkill. Um, the other thing, the other concern, the caution I have is, is um, I very much get and appreciate the desire to save, save members the time from needless thing re responding to a request that's already been adequately responded to. But I would want to be careful not to infringe upon members' prerogative to do so um, as elected officials who answer to the public. Um, and I know that that's not the suggestion here at all by any means. It's, it's not, that's not the intention. But I think the effect could be un intentionally chilling um, of our of our desire if we have one to respond individual to, individual to people um, and be responsive to to the folks who elected us. So you know, I, I like I said, I think I appreciate 
the workflow challenge here. There is a, there is a building inefficiency. Um, I'd be interested, Mr. Chair, if you want to continue brainstorming maybe with some town staff to try to think about if there are technology solutions that would make it easier um, and not and not more work, um, you know, for the rest of us or for the staff. Um, but those are just some of my my thoughts off the bat. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No, I appreciate, I appreciate that. that. You know, so, 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 so. All right. Yeah, everybody else has spoken, so I'll, I'll say a couple of things. I, I, I think this is something that, that I agree with, with comments that both Mr. Hurd and, and, and Mr. Helmuth made at that in terms of um, if there is an issue that comes up and, and you as chair, you get first crack at it, feel it should come before the whole board, it's your prerogative to put it on the agenda. I also agree there are requests that come in and whether it's just to me directly or the whole select board and if i think it's something that is a, an issue that the town manager through his staff can can deal with i will forward it and say i received this wanted to send it along to you and i think i think that's you, you look at it on on a case by case type basis um on that and i, and I will note you know we have an example of two pieces of correspondence tonight and this is a little bit different but we received from mr pooler these are two issues that came up at our last meeting. This is a good use of the correspondence received because we're getting responses to things that came up last meeting. So that's the type of thing we're looking at. But I, I, I agree on the prerogative issue. The other thing is I may give a different answer to something than you do. So if you're trying to coordinate an answer, my answer, you know, I, I, I'd like to, to craft my answer for myself as opposed to for the board. If it's something that the board needs to look at, on a particular piece of correspondence or an issue that comes up, then it's probably best discussed as part of its its own agenda item. Yeah. Well, as Mr. Helmuth noted me, there was, there was never any suggestion that people couldn't respond on their own. I understand what Mr. Helmuth is saying is that I mean, it just the existence of it creates a chilling effect. You know, it's a it's an argument that you know. It, it's not the same as the slippery slope argument, but it's always the kind of argument that I often have a problem, you know, using as a reason for not doing something, you know, uh, but, you know, but that said, like I said, this was just put out for discussion, you know, uh, I mean, one of the goals is just me, you know, me trying to improve, you know, um, the way you know, we communicate, me with ourselves and, and, and residents, and it was just something that, uh, have been something that I had um, been struggling with me you know, since I've been on the board and had talked with um, uh, at least one of you. Um, well, actually, only one of you uh, about it. So, so, uh, so that's it. You know, so, so I am. I'm. I'm we have the the one alias. I mean, I, I guess the maybe something I'll ask you to think about. You know. Uh, and staff maybe is whether we do want to create another alias that makes it easier for people to send mail to all of us, you know. Uh, and, and so just think about that. I'm not going to ask that now because maybe we do want them to actually have to like be put in the names for each of us, you know, uh, so that they, they really do have to work to send it to all of us as opposed to an alias that would be like, you know, select board all or something like that. So, so think about that and, 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 um, and unless there's more to say on this, um, we'll move on and we'll go tend something else. I mean, maybe next week because next week might be a pretty light agenda. I mean, I will not do these on, on nights when we have a lot on the agenda. I mean, but it is a way to just kind of keep our goals in front of us. And certainly if folks have something that they would like to bring up uh, related to goals, and these are goals that are SB goals, I mean, uh, or maybe SB I mean, and TM goals. I mean, uh, so, so. Um, I think we're set here, and we'll um, move on to correspondence received. You know, so we have a request for a stop sign on Dudley Street at Brattle Street by Mark Weiss, in number 17, a memo regarding public safety overtime budgets by Sandy Pooler, town manager, and number 18, a memo regarding the status of Chetna Street, once again, by the town manager. I turn to my colleagues. And motion by Ms. Mahan. And Mr. Mr. <laughs> okay, sorry, Mr. Helmets, I'm a little slow. I want to get into your hands, so Mr. Hurt got it. You know, so um, so any um, comments, questions? Yeah, um, Mr. Helmets. 
Thank you, Mr. Director. Um, I just want to express my appreciation to the town manager for the uh, the two detailed memos uh, that were in correspondence received. I thought they were informative, and I appreciate the time that went into that and the responsiveness uh, to the select board requests on those. Mr. Chairman, um, yes, can yes. I ask on Mr. Weiss, uh, number 16, if that should, instead of, I don't know if it should go to TAC or if it should go to our Traffic Enforcement Division Officer Rateau. So I'll leave it to the chairman to have a conversation with the town manager, uh, which way it should go. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and so, yeah, I, I just do want to say that um, yeah, I really appreciate the, the responses, uh, Mr. Pooler. And, uh, yeah, um, and thankfully, I mean, since these are on the agenda, it will be searchable uh, through <laughs> those agendas so that when they come up again, because cause in the case of the overtime budget, I mean, I kind of recall that one from town meeting. And, and it's just nice to have a place to go where you can see like a definitive response. I mean, so, so um, I very much appreciate that. And, 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 I'll, and I'll say to the Chestnut Street, I mean, I'll stay tuned. There's more to come on that. I mean, we may be having and update me from TAC I mean, at our um, our next meeting, you know. So it's because um, yesterday's TAC meeting was um, quite a productive meeting. It was a long meeting, a lot of came out of it, and we'll be seeing you know, some results of that at our next meeting. And so, um, yes, I will take Ms. Mahan's advice, I and mean, I'll talk with you, Mr. Manager, I mean, about I mean, that item, because I was thinking myself, I mean, how do we handle stop signs? I mean, and, and it may need to go to TAC, I'm not sure. Um, Mr. Hurt? TAC, I know that a T-stop is an automatic stop, so there's no there's no traffic analysis that needs to be done. So the, I think the town manager's office could just handle the installation of a stop sign. Because there's, 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 no, there's no different change to the traffic rules and order. Whenever there is a T-stop, there doesn't need to be a stop sign because by law you have a stop sign so should be something i think we could resolve pretty quickly and not put have to burden tack with it all right, all right. well thank you mr hurts it's always helpful to have another member attack on the board you know so uh all right i think we're all set here so on a motion to um receive um by ms mahan and second by mr hurt mr heim mr hurt yes mr decorsi yes mr helen Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. She had vote. Thank you. And you know, so I'm um, looking in the attendees, me and, and and we're all alone here, you know, except for Ms. Ms. Gilbert, you know. So I think we're all set with open forum and and, and so uh, I'm going to um, do uh, new business now. Uh, so Mrs. Mark. No new business, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hine. No new business, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Puller. No new business, thank you. Okay, and I'm going to go to um, the virtual land. I mean, um, Mr. Helmuth. No new business. Mr. Hurd. Hurd. No new business. Mr. Mahan. Mr. Mahan. Uh, my new business is the CBA opening, which we already talked about, so nothing else, thank you. And Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah. just uh, briefly. Um, and, and this was mentioned earlier tonight, and Mrs. Mahan mentioned that we received the resignation from Mr. Mills, and we often are appointing people at our, at our meetings, and there were two longtime uh, committee members whose resignations were one we received today, Mr. Mills, Mr. Warden had stepped down, it's on the Board of Registrars, and um, I want to thank them for their service. Uh, Mr. Mills was on the ZBA during the MUGAR hearings, which are very lengthy, the other um, 40B hearing and many other hearings, and, and he's actually leaving town. That's, that's what's precipitating his um, <coughs> leaving the ZBA. Mr. Warden had served for, for years, probably decades, on the, on the Board of Registrars. So I want to thank him for his service. So we're fortunate to have people to step into positions, but we also want to thank people who have served for a long period of time who are leaving. And then just one comment. Um, during the pandemic, we talked about the select board being the laboratory for remote meetings and in person and fully remote. And I believe this is the first time. And, and it is good to see how we can run a meeting where there are more meetings, more members attending remotely than are in person. And, and I think um, the technology, you know, we had one blip with the, the power here, but it just shows you what you can do and, and what we will continue 
to look at as, as we run meetings and receive public input. But um, I, think, I think it was interesting just to see how, how that worked. And at least from here in the chambers, it was very easy to hear my colleagues and, and to see them on, on issues. And, and um, so I think it was successful. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. so whether it mean is for health reasons mean or is necessary mean or, or some matter of convenience, as I've told you all, mean, mean, mean please, mean, technology is our friend here and it'll, it'll make things easier for us. I mean, so, so I'm glad that you were able to utilize it. And so um, I have um, four quick items for new business. You know, um, the first, I, mean, I saw the uh, notice, I mean, a, a news article about I mean, Agnes's uh, 150th anniversary. I mean, um, that's impressive I mean, uh, for any institution I mean, uh, to, to um, celebrate 150 years here. In Arlington, so congratulations on that. Uh, the second is that uh, I would like to um, have a conversation about the beautification uh, committee. We have it as our goal to populate that committee, and, and so I'm going to put that on the agenda. Although I may reach out to you, Mr. Hurd, as my plus one on this. Me, you know, so I know there's been some work with the chamber on this. So. Just want to give a little heads up on that. And I did actually mention you know, during correspondence received that we're going to have some updates from TAC you know, next meeting. You know, and, and, um, and finally, I you know, want to congratulate um, Erica Swartz being on conducting a really um, a, a very enjoyable um, annual meeting for the Housing Corporation of Arlington in, on Tuesday. He, uh, they asked me to speak, and I had prepared uh, two speeches because I was of two minds, you know, and I had them pick you know, one of them kind of randomly, and so I gave them the creative speech, you know, uh, and so that was fun. But it, it was a really nicely done uh, event, and, and the ACA, as we all know, do uh, they do great work, and, and I think Erica is really a great. Um, addition as the new executive director. So um, with that, I'm going to end on the land acknowledgement. My general pattern is to do um, the land acknowledgement on the first meeting of the month. You know, I'm trying to adhere to the spirit of, of the resolution, and that is that we do acknowledge the what has led, I mean, well, acknowledge the past. I mean, and, and I'm not doing it every meeting because I think sometimes by not having something, I mean, you are more aware of it. You know? And so if you do it every meeting at the same time, you know, it just becomes kind of a habit I mean, that people don't focus on as much. And I am putting it this month I mean, at the end. And partly because I saw Sustainable Arlington do it, and, and I regret that I haven't been to some of their meetings uh, lately. I'm going to try and get there. And I thought that was an interesting place to put it because instead of doing it at the beginning, we're going to end um, thinking about the land acknowledgement. And we acknowledge that Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous people from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. I mean, and I think it's particularly appropriate given that we celebrated um, Indigenous Peoples Day in early at the beginning of the week. So with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. So on a motion to adjourn by Ms. Mahan and a second by Mr. Horsey. Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hellman. Yes. yes. Mrs. Mahan. My phone is 17%. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Digits. Yes. It's yes. unanimous. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Take care. Good meeting.